Hi everyone, Susan Gerbic here from Psychics Explained. I'm going to talk about an article that just came out in the last few days in Vanity Fair on the grief vampire Tyler Henry. Now, I have done some videos on Tyler Henry and I've done a lot of articles on Tyler Henry. I just almost by accident stumbled across him in the week or two before he became really famous. They were just starting to push him out on the the channel he's on, E. And I really started taking a look at him very at the beginning. So I have strong opinions about what I think is going on with Tyler Henry. And um, I haven't given as much attention lately because I've been focusing on more or less private readings by these grief vampires. In other words, readings that I can attend and my team can attend and we can watch them do either private readings or by uh, Zoom meetings or whatever, where there's like a gallery of people and we can watch or they're doing lives, you know, on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok live videos. And those videos were getting a, a better sense of how how they manipulate people, the wordplay, um, and it's not, they're not edited, which is pretty much everything you find on Tyler Henry is those are heavily edited videos to show him at his best. So, I mean, I've, I've done videos, like I said, in articles on him, and I don't usually feel like there's much more I can do about it because I've been focusing more on um, not the celebrities who are there because they want to be, they're celebrities and they want to be on TV. So they're there. It's hard to tell how much is uh, scripted, improvised, um, or, you know, this, the celebrities going along with it because they want to make it on the show. And the more likely that they uh, really um, praise Tyler Henry, they're more likely they're going to get a bigger segment on the show as well as a bigger uh, part of the trailer that is shown for commercials and stuff so it's really hard to tell what's going on with those readings it, for that reason so let's talk about this vanity fair article that just came out it was brought to my attention just today and i'm going to put it up here for you I'm not going to read it verbatim, but let's just go through it really quickly. And what you're going to be looking at is an archive version because I archive everything because that's the way you do things in, in the world I'm in. Things disappear and we want to make sure we have um, the archived copy. So this was published by Sergio Garcia. And I'm scrolling up here and it says it's called, oh, it came out December 13th, 2023. I'm recording this on December 26, 2023. Vanity Fair, the medium is the message, is the name of the article. Hollywood medium Tyler Henry has a waiting list 600,000 people long. Wow, what a headline that is. Um, oh, it's not by it's not by this Garcia, Sergio Garcia. There was a photo here whenever it was the non-archive version. This article is written by Britt. Hemeth, H-E-N-N-E-M-U-T-H. So let's talk about that headline there, 600,000 people long. First off, where is this list? Can I see it? Who's going to be added to a list that is 600,000 long? Does that mean they paid to be on the list? Has he received uh, money for these people with six, you know, for... And they've like reserved a room, reserved a reading. I mean, how could you possibly get through 600,000 readings? That's just not going to happen. He says, or his his people say, his list is 600,000. He's not doing readings, just he's reading celebrities and so on. You have to have, um, you have to have your, your agent get you a reading is what's going on there. So the idea that he has a, a waiting list 600,000 people long is right. Let's see that. We have for years heard from mediums, from the medium, who says that their waiting list is a year long or two years long or five years long or whatever it is. But then in what we've encountered 
is that you can get a reading squeaked in if you're willing to pay an emergency reading. You'll you'll be able to be squeezed in. And what we also think is going on is people will be contacted and saying, you know, you, you were on our list. It was a it was a year long, but if you want to, we have an opening coming up really soon. If you want to pay an extra you know, 10% or whatever it is, a hundred dollars or whatever, we can, we can move you up on the list. And of course, people are going to want to be moved up on the list because you paid to get the reading in the first place. So once you've already paid your $400 or $500, adding another hundred dollars on it to get moved up is, is not much of a thing. So again, we don't, nobody sees these lists. There's, there's not like a spreadsheet somewhere where it's out there and people are adding their name to the list. It's, it's just something they say. Though I wouldn't be shocked, Tyler Henry is absolutely the bee's knees. All right, let's look at this article again. So we're going to go back to it. Um, I'm going to start at the very bottom because I want you to understand um, who this person is and what they say about their experience with Tyler Henry. I think that has more to do with it than I think it's a better place to start. So this person, Britt Hem. Hemeth is a Vanity Fair senior West Coast editor. Okay, he's a senior West Coast editor. He should know better. He profiles rising talent for the vanity section each month. Rising talent, Tyler Henry's already famous. And the vanity section each month. That's vanity section. What the heck are you trying to say? This is some... Um, person with the vanity or I mean or is it to be boosted this guy is it used for for what reason I don't know if somebody could tell me that in the in the chat I would appreciate it he helps him produce and cast oops helps produce and cast the annual Holly, Hollywood issue and oversees Vanity Fair's relations with the West Coast market as well as the Canes oh oh yeah the festivals he's based in LA which is where Tyler Henry is so the West Coast market, Vanity Fair's relations with the West Coast market. So are we trying to say that this is like a paid article? Is this something that they're they're saying that this is used to promote celebrities? I'm, I'm not quite sure what, what the thinking is on that, but um, it sounds like it's a fluff piece is what it sounds like. Okay. All right, where is it saying? Okay, so here's the section about um, skepticism. Never this part here. And I'm not going to read it, but so he says that skepticism is a big part of his life when explaining himself he seems to have come to peace with this reality we might not all relate to being a medium but everyone relates relates to being the outsider being in, in the workplace and i sympathize with those who feel like the other so he's really trying to connect with people who feel different okay whatever maybe that's what 20 what is he now 23 that's that's where they are um he says one of the greatest pieces of advice I was ever given is that someone told me, Tyler, you can be the biggest, juiciest peach in the world, and there's still going to be people who hate peaches. Okay. I love that because it really reminds us that we are what we are, and diversity is the beauty of the world. My work is ideological. It falls into the realm of religion and politics, which are typically things people don't talk about at the dinner table. So naturally, I knew, especially as a young person, I'd be under a lot of scrutiny. I accepted it and I've embraced skepticism. I really understand why people have doubt and would rather people have doubt to learn more through that process of understanding than just blindly believe everything that everybody does. So I really value critical thinking and have always been a big proponent of it, despite the fact that I've dealt with some vitriol. Well, I don't know about vitriol. I've never been, I've never been somebody who, um, participates in ad hominem attacks or anything of that sort. So vitriol is kind of a, 
a, a, a word that doesn't apply to me. And I assume he's talking about just being in the internet world, everybody's going to get this hate stuff because people are like that. Um, but I am the biggest critic of Tyler Henry. There have been other people who've written some really great articles and done great work on him, but I've had the consistent um, detailed work on Tyler Henry. So I don't know if he's talking about me, but this idea, and this happens to a lot of psychics. They, they say that, oh, I embrace skepticism and I embrace all of that kind of critical thinking thing. No, I, I, they don't. They, they really don't. Tyler Henry when I published my very first article on him in January of 2016, I published the article and tagged him on Twitter and I think Facebook. And next thing I know, I'm, I'm blocked, blocked. He didn't want to engage with me. He didn't want to talk to me. He didn't want to do anything of the sort. Absolutely a block. And that was at the very beginning of his popularity. So this idea of critical thinking and engaging with people, zip, zero. I mean, he doesn't even mention me in this article, which is exactly um, not um, engaging in any kind of way about this. So um, there is, it goes on about his boyfriend and how he's you know, living his life and all that. That's really nice and everything. I hope he goes out for ice cream and gets, you know, has a great life and, and does that kind of stuff. But um, he has a book here and hereafter, whatever. Again, it's it's from his his mouth, so whatever that means. He's involved with an online community called the Collective by Fireside that allows participants from Mexico and India to seek a reading virtually. <laughs> How sweet! He's just expanded his borders to Mexico and India. I, I'm come on. How, how desperate are you? You're like I said, you're probably already making 10 million a year. What do you want to make 11 million a year? Is it going to make that big a difference? He doesn't even have a, a driver's license. He says, he says he might get a bike. Um, what do you need the money for? Okay. It talks about his origin story, but I'm, I'm not so sure about this. We know that the Hollywood producers who were trying to find a Tyler Henry type person, they were looking to do a story called um, Hollywood teen medium or something like that. They were looking for a teenager. So when he, they stumbled across him who was 19, what they were doing is he, he fit the bill perfectly. You know, he, he's the demographics. He's a really sweet, charming, uh, innocent kind of young guy. He didn't have any baggage and that was exactly what they were looking for. And um, I've covered this in many of my other videos. Those psychics who really want uh, psychic mediums who want to be famous, who are doing everything they can to get their, their shows or trailers and so on. What happens is they end up having too much history, a history of um, trying to solve crimes and that are unsolved and when they do that and the crime is eventually solved and it turns out that they didn't know what they were talking about then people like myself and others who follow this kind of world we write about that and it becomes it can become a problem it can it can be um something that is going to harm their career and if they're just budding and just starting out then somebody who is you know brand new to the market and then here comes a story that says oh actually the case was solved and everything they said was wrong and in the case of tyler henry later in his career he did an interview with matt lauer uh, from the news who was super famous in the news business and then after he did this video with him, giving him a reading, it was a positive reading about being out in a boat and his dad was there and and there was coins and, and so on. The reading was fine. It was just another celebrity reading. But not long after that, Matt Lauer was found, was fired from his job. His wife left him. Um, the, uh, everybody turned on him pretty much. And he became a pariah in the world because he was accused of all kinds of very awful 
um, abuses. You can check it out if you want to, if you, if you are one of the few people who aren't aware of what happened with Matt Lauer. His last name is spelled L-A-U-E-R, I believe, if you want to look him up. So if Tyler Henry had not been in the position he was at that time where he was already famous, he already had a contract, then that would have hurt his hurt him a lot if it had come out at the very beginning that somebody he gave a reading to and was very praising and wonderful and everything's great in your life and then find out that some horrible uh what what the person was really like and then all this bad stuff starts coming out so so it's you got to be careful so it's it's a, a timing kind of thing and Tyler Henry just happened to be in the right place at the right time. He was 19 years old. He had zero baggage. He's from a very small town, uh, fairly small town. And he, uh, you know, <laughs> he just didn't have a lot going on. And they gave him a contract. There was something else in here I thought that was really interesting because they were constantly saying how Tyler Henry doesn't know any of the people he's he's has anything to do with. Um, that he reads for he doesn't know anything about tv and movie stars and all that kind of stuff but i believe ah uh, here it is let me let me screen share it so you can see this this is contradicting pretty much everything that i've that they've ever said about him right here this part right here for as long as henry can remember he's loved television being on it feels natural. Watching it, however, can be challenging. He'll start picking up the actor's energies and experience distance, distracting phenomenons the whole time he's, oh, premonitions the whole time he's watching. So I thought that was interesting because it says here is for as long as Henry can remember, he's loved television. So when you look at the 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 whole Tyler Henry show, I mean, for the first few seasons, it was always Tyler Henry doesn't know who these people are. He has no idea who they are. He doesn't know anything about movies or TV or plays or any of that kind of stuff. But Vanity Fair says that's completely different. For as long as he can remember, he's loved television. I find that really fascinating that he's changed, he's changed gears here. So, um, okay, so the reporter says, before our interview really starts, he offers me an impromptu reading. What else? Before this assignment, I'd never seen the show. That's pretty odd. Um, you know, you're working for Vanity Fair in the Hollywood, Hollywood division and you haven't seen the show. Though friends of mine who have experienced lost have found solace in the series and raved to me about Henry's abilities. Well, that's interesting. Um, you know, lots of people tell, well, these are people watching the show and the show is carefully edited um, to, and you'll note in the show, Hollywood Medium, the music cues that let you know when it's time to feel like that tingly feeling of, oh, this is wonderful, and oh, this is really sad, and when you should be getting ready for, you know, that moment to get the tears coming, going through you, it's, the music is very emotional, and you don't really notice it unless somebody points it out to you, but it is extremely manipulative, the way the show is edited, and the music, and so on. So somebody, it doesn't surprise me that somebody who is experiencing loss, or who's sad, or whatever, watching a show that is meant to manipulate, meant to invoke emotions. Like if you've just had a breakup and you you kind of want to watch one of those movies that that where there's revenge <laughs> or people get back together again or they find out that the person that they that really loves them is themselves and they need to, you know, you watch those kinds of shows when you're in a kind of a mood. And it makes you feel better about yourself and you can lose yourself for the moment in there. So I'm not shocked that, that people want to watch a show whenever they're in a sad mood and then they feel inspired and, and, you know, the tears come. That doesn't surprise me at all. 
This part here is also interesting. I must say that I was astounded by names, details, health specificities, and other surprises that he came up with, none of which are Googleable. As someone who probably leans towards cynicism when it comes to mediums, I was amazed. I hear that a lot too. I was skeptical until I had this one reading. I didn't look at any of the critical articles about him. I didn't read anything on cold reading, hot reading, or how mediums work or anything. I've done zero research. My friends tell me that this is real. And I'm a skeptic about mediums. And it took one reading to change your mind without doing any research at all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're not a, you're not, that's not a skeptic. Don't try that with me. That's just silly. Unless you have a different definition of the word skeptic, which is totally not what um, you're using it in this article. So none of this is Googleable. Okay. Number one, you're doing an article for Vanity Fair with Tyler Henry. You are Googleable. You are lookable. It's it's not going to be hard. I'm not going to bother right now because you didn't give us your reading. So I don't know what Tyler Henry told you. But of course you're Googleable. You can't not be. Your social media, your family, your friends. I mean, especially with a last name. What is this guy's last name is? Um, H e n n e m u t h. So don't give me that. There's no way they could have known crap because that's just nonsense. All right, this is the person who did zero research. Um, so people automatically go to the hot reading. In other words, he got so much right. There's no way they could have known it because they couldn't have googled it. They could. It's nowhere, which we all know it's there, right? Okay. But most mediums cold read. And that means they are not doing a Google search ahead of time, which Tyler Henry could have easily have done considering that he knew that this, this uh, reporter was going to do a story on him. How hard is that to do? It's not hard at all. But Tyler didn't, may have not bothered. And cold reading as if you guys <laughs> definitely check out some of my videos on cold reading. I just put out a cold reading bingo um, video. I We had a blast doing it. It was really fun um, and very educational about cold reading. But a lot of my videos that I do are of mediums cold reading. And it looks real. You guys, there's a lot of trickery going on there. If you're just relying on your pencil and paper taking notes um, or just your memory when you're getting the reading, Forget it. They've already won. You have to have a video or audio of it and then sit down and transcribe it and really look into the detail of it. Then, only then, with a critical eye, will you figure out how you were cold read. And I can almost guarantee that's exactly what happened because that's typical for almost everybody who says, oh yeah, I had this reading and they were spot on. There's no way they could have known. They couldn't have Googled me. And it was details that there's no way somebody could have said. And then when you find out later, it's just the same old tropes. I found a feather and he gave me this feather. And there was this uh, pan of cookies that just came out of the oven and it made the house smell so amazing. And then there was this goldfish in a goldfish bowl. And how could Tyler have known about the goldfish in the goldfish bowl? So, uh-uh. Okay, so I'm going to end this. Um, I will put a link to this archive version in here. It doesn't have the photographs of Tyler. If you really want to see Tyler's photograph, um, Google it yourself. But I'm going to put the archive version in here so that Vanity Fair doesn't get another hit on their article. And, you know, the way I feel about this is, oh, he's 27 now. Wow. Wow. I've been doing this since he was 19. Ooh, it's eight years. Wow. Where is time gone? Funny, there was that pandemic thing in the middle there. 
few months, a few years ago, where we were all locked down and nobody, including Tyler Henry, told us anything about it. Wow, what a great, I guess he was too busy counting his money because uh, uh, he didn't warn anybody. Oh, he's also never found anybody who's been dead that his body's missing. He's never solved a crime. He's never found a missing child. Nothing, never. No, nada. He doesn't go down. I mean, you would think the Hollywood division would have all their cases solved. There would be no cold cases. I mean, seriously, if Tyler Henry could talk to the dead, do you think he'd be sitting on a Netflix show? No, he would be. He would, you would either, he would be either everywhere, the most famous person in the world, or he would be nowhere and nobody would have ever heard of him because he would be in a bunker somewhere. The military or the governments would have him. No, come on, let's use your critical thinking skills. Let's use our critical thinking skills. That's where we should really be going with this. But Vanity Fair, come on. I just saw an article, a, a news article, just, just in the news, somebody doing serious politics. And the reporter comes on and they're talking about politics and they're really getting into the details of it because they know their business. And I believe that was coming out of Vanity Fair. True journalism. And then you got these people, these hee-haws over here on their same platform that's making the real journalists look like they are novices. I mean, how can you take it seriously when you have, I mean, I know it's not the reporter's fault, but when you're getting assigned to do a medium reading uh, uh, an article on this grief vampire tater tot Tyler Henry then that just reduces the credibility of the rest of the of the staff and your whole organization it just it just is because when you're in print like this then it makes it sound like somebody's done some research and they've obviously done no research it's it's sad um, this is why we can't have nice things that's um why our society is in trouble as it is because we lack critical thinking skills. We see these things and we immediately say, oh, it's in print or it looks like it's it's by a reputable thing and they must have done the research so it must be real. And lots of people believe it just because of that. They don't think any further of it. And it dumbs down our society. And I think what we need is less um, pandering to lazy thinkers, people who are um, should know better and people who are willfully ignorant about this. I'm not talking about people who are in grief, who fall for this con, uh, these uh, grief vampires. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about people who believe and watch these shows and, and just get all giggly whenever they hear about Tyler Henry. Oh, Tyler Henry. Oh. You should know better because the information on mediumship and how this is done has been out for decades and decades and decades it's not hidden knowledge it's on wikipedia it's on a google it's all over the place people have always been talking about this and how it's done so if you're not looking it up i don't know you're going to find these kind of articles that just pander to your to uh, gossip and um, a feeling that maybe you know something when you don't it's dumbing down society and i I just am, I'm sad for society because of these kinds of things. There's no reason to do an article, a full article on Vanity Fair on this grief vampire. Absolutely not. Unless they're going to profile the fact that he's all of the, the ways it looks like he's real. Because it just gives him more shows. All right. Thank you, everyone. I um, have a lot of content I still have to do. Lots and lots of it. I will try to do my best to get as much out as I can before I have, have some more trips I have to take. And um, so I'll be away from my computer. But I'll try to give you a lot of content to look at. This is a lot of work. We are really on a mission to get this in, um, mediumship, get down into the weeds. Please leave me comments. I do my best to respond to every comment that's given to me. Thank you all.